Good morning, uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Asma Adnan, lecturer in the Department of Computer Science in Lofpra. And today I'll be talking about different kind of research I have done around vehicular network, around trust and uh, security. <clears throat> so I have a bunch of things I'll be talking about. I tried to summarize them in an outline. So I will give an introduction to some of you who do not know what vehicular network is, called as well VANET, etc. I'll be talking about the general security challenges that I have faced during research in this area and with more focus around trust management. And of course, I will give you an introduction of what is trust exactly, what are the problems, and how, how we have <clears throat> uh, we have used trust to make vehicular network secure, because there are different ways to do that. And I'll be talking, uh, I, I will finish the presentation, hopefully if I have time, with the recent research I have done around this uh, topic as well. So vehicular network called as well VANET for vehicular ad hoc network. So at the end of the day, it's an ad hoc network. So it's an auto organized, uh, no infrastructure and it, with, a, with, a, with a mobile nodes. But instead of nodes, we have cars. So cars can communicate with each other. They can communicate with specific nodes, part of the infrastructure. So there are some parts of the roads that are fixed that communicate information with cars. So here you can see in this, this small picture here, we have uh, cars running in a platoon. So all in the same speed. And the first car get a message from this uh, road roadside unit here saying there's a speed limit. So it starts slowing down and sending messages to all the cars behind so they can slow down or get the message early on time and they start slowing down. So this, this paradigm really has enabled a huge amount of applications for mainly, mainly for driver safety, but there, uh, there, there was some more application around more infotainment and more luxurious driving, etc. So, <clears throat> so this was a nice picture. So let's see the more network type of uh, picture. So we have two types of communications here, V2V for vehicle to vehicle. Uh, and they, they, they use short range communication protocol, DSRC, uh, presented in the uh, standard 8211P. And then we have V2I, so vehicle to infrastructure uh, communication. So I have an example here. So there's a collusion, for example, here. So the cars will broadcast a message. There's a collusion in this uh, location and all the surrounding cars will get this message. So to enable driver to start taking action earlier, changing lane or slowing down or stopping uh, completely. The message as well will be sent to the infrastructure. So they know that there, there is, there's probably an accident, there, there's some traffic issues and they start, for example, sending information to fix traffic issues for traffic for for, for all sorts of uh, traffic management uh, purposes, or for example, they can know oh there is a there is a collusion there. We need to send an ambulance, for example. So uh, so th this was just an example of how it's going to be um, or, or the, the the different type of uh, applications. <clears throat> now with Internet of Internet of Things, there's something called Internet of Vehicles, which is kind of an ev uh, Internet of Things which it evolved, including vehicles, because a vehicle is a thing which is connected. So it could be, it is part of Internet of Things. And the, the all this intelligent transportation system technology has become a huge part of what we are talking about uh, now, smart cities or connected cities, etc. And then now we enabled cars and we enabled applications, connected applications within the car to communicate even more information. So we have V2V, V2I, and we have V2P, v vehicle to pedestrian. There were some examples. I have seen some real application in cities with huge fog where cars can communicate with smartphones of a pedestrian to detect if there is any pedestrian and the pedestrians will get like a warning that there is a car coming, be careful before uh, crossing. So kind of everything connected, the car becomes part of the city, they can communicate with pedestrians, etc. And we have infrastructure to infrastructure, all the information about the city will be shared for traffic management and all sorts of uh, application to enable more efficient traffic. <clears throat> so let's go back to the application. So what, what, what is this uh, technology used for? So in one of our papers, we try to uh, classify the application into three categories. Uh, category number one is driver safety for active application. Uh, for example, for a warning about uh, pedestrians, 
uh, co uh, um, cooperative driving, like I'm, I'm not going to call it autonomous driving, but cooperative driving with the vehicle and the uh, driver. We have traffic efficiency applications, like for example, when there is a, a congestion or there is a, a curve, there will be warning sent to the uh, sense between cars. <clears throat> So this kind of application will assist the driver, will help the driver send early warning. <clears throat> and finally, we have less uh, non-safety applications. So this, this um, application that are not time uh, are not time critical, and it's very important to put them in a separate section because their requirements are completely different from the others. We can imagine that if you want to have a crash warning, you need to have in on time compared to weather warning. <clears throat> Um, so there are a range of uh, applications here, and there are even more, for example, e-parking, carpooling, all these applications have been as, as well uh, developed as part of the industry of connected cars and added to non-safety uh, application. I'm not going to go into too much details, but there are so many papers talking about the industry and the new application of Internet of uh, Vehicles. <clears throat> so what we are interested in is what are the problems with developing those applications in terms of security? What are the challenges? So there are security challenges, we have privacy challenges and trust challenges. Let's go into each point now. So sec security, so you can imagine that when sharing, inf when sharing a message between cars, uh, we need to ensure that all the environment for sharing message and disseminating need to be secure. So we need to ensure confidentiality if it's a, a, a private message. We need to ensure authenticity and uh, the integrity and the availability of the message. So all the authorized nodes will be able to access this information on time. <clears throat> And because it's an ad hoc network at the end of the day, let's go back to the research that's been done a long time ago on ad hoc network security. Uh, it's, <clears throat> it, there's no central entity, it's wireless, so any node can say anything and can behave in any way. So there's no legitimate or trusted entity to control everything or monitor everything. So it's very easy to have an illegitimate vehicle behaving in a, a malicious way. And there is, I invite you, there is, um, I invite you to read the report, focus on cybersecurity analysis on connected cars. You know, there are cybersecurity reports issued every year or every six months by cybersecurity uh, companies in general. But for connected cars, there's a company called Upstream. They focus on cybersecurity analysis and attacks analysis, con focus on connected vehicles. And you can see the huge range of a huge range of attacks and vulnerabilities that have been exploited by hackers to hack um, uh, cars. Again, there's there is a big range, and here we do, we talk about a, another level of cyber attacks. It's called the lethal attacks because attacking a braking system of a car will make a car stop in the middle of a highway, and it could could cause an uh, accident. And they have been proved. Hackers and researchers have proved that this was possible. And there are different types of malicious attacks, for example, network uh, monitoring, uh, detecting, atta the detecting messages and changing the, the, the content of the warnings, or uh, causing denial of service attack, uh, disseminating huge amount of warnings, <clears throat> or simply a social or, uh, or um, ethical attacks targeting the driver of the car. To, to steal their cars. There's now a new way to steal the cars by using technology. Uh, and another very, very key uh, challenge as well is privacy. I remember when I was a PhD student, long time ago, when I attended one of the first, uh, I, I remember it was the first presentation that keynote speaker was talking about connected cars. And I remember one of the, the attendees said, oh, I don't want to use a connected car. I don't want my wife to track me all the time. And uh, the, 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 everyone was uh, laughing, but actually he pointed out a very serious problem because he cared about his privacy. Well, of course, he cared more about his wife to know where he was, but this is a general issue. <clears throat> if I'm driving a car that is connected and the car is sharing information about my driving style, um, if I slow down, it's going to disseminate messages. I wonder what other information is going to disseminate about me. How do I know what information is disseminated about me? Where does the information go? 
So there's more awareness about the privacy. And now you, you have certainly heard about the GDPR a few years ago. There's more and more awareness around the uh, privacy now. Even applications using data, the, the user need to know why, what kind of data is used, how is it used, and where does it go exactly. Uh, so you can find, I, I will go back to the trust in a little while. So um, I've put a picture here for one of my papers as well with my PhD student Farhan who finished, uh, where we uh, categorized attacks on uh, connected cars. So we basically put them on three categories, attacks on the vehicular system, on the vehicle itself, attacks on the information, so the data that is exchanged between the cars, so we have, for example, if it's dropping, jamming, uh, men in the middle, spoofing, etc. And we have attacks on the infrastructure. This type of categorization helps us to understand where are the vulnerabilities and to uh, understand the, the, the uh, making a difference between the, all the different uh, vulnerabilities, categorizing them, helped us as well to develop better understanding on how trust models will be uh, developed. So let's look at an example here of a jamming attack. There's so many, uh, I have so many examples, but I've, I've picked uh, this one, Oops, sorry. So um, th this is one of the most severe attacks. So jamming, like any, um, any jamming attack in a network. So here there was a collusion between these two cars and they will broadcast a message with their location. So all the cars uh, behind, we get this, we need to get this information on time to start slowing down or changing lane simple basic application of vehicular uh, network. So imagine the car in red will, will decide to not sh uh, broadcast this information. So cause um, will just drop it. So he, this car in red will be able to take actions, but all the other cars will not be able to take action, especially if they if you are in highway and the, the distance between these is very short. Uh, so you can imagine the consequences here. So why do we need trust? So before, let's define trust. So uh, if you if you start looking at the different research in the literature review about trust, there's hundreds of definitions, and they are all correct because trust should be defined based on the context. What, where do I need trust? I need it between an, a, a, in a network of auto-organized nodes, cars here. So we define the trust as the following: is the confidence or the belief that an entity will behave in a certain way within a specific uh, uh, context. So tr a trust is, has been always an efficient mechanism to use, sorry, uh, to use to enable every node to take action, to, to decide whether to trust an information or trust another node in the network based on his own observations. So it's, I know it's a human concept that we, we can, put it on uh, machines or nodes, because all those nodes will use the same application, will use the same protocols, same routing uh, protocols to uh, communicate. So each node is able actually to observe the neighboring nodes and to see, are they operating according to the same protocol as me? Yes, so I can trust them. If they are not, I will not uh, trust them. So the concept of trust is very easy to do when we have a wired uh, network because you have a central entity. Central entity will be the one who's decide who's, who's going to be uh, uh, trusted or not. When we talk about ad hoc network, it's difficult because we don't have central entity. But when it's vehicular network, it's even harder than ad hoc network because we have high mobility. So nodes will will have short time to make an observation about the behavior of the other node of the surrounding nodes. That's what becomes more uh, difficult. <clears throat> so we have two types of uh, uh, trust. We have direct uh, uh, trust, for example, here uh, between vehicle A and B, they are neighbors, so they are within the range of each other. So A, vehicle A can see the behavior, can see all the measures disseminated by B and can see the identity of B, and then he can make decision to trust or not B. And we have indirect trust, also called recommendation, and used to build reputation uh, systems. Here we have vehicle A who knows vehicle C, vehicle C who knows vehicle B, and vehicle A needs to make a decision about vehicle B, and he will be using the recommendation of vehicle C. So vehicle C will say, yeah, I communicated with B, this is how I think about him. So we will give him a, re a reputation of B based on his own observation. 
and vehicle A, we say, mm, yeah, I trust C, so I will trust his uh, recommendation. Or we say, I don't trust C, I don't trust your recommendation. Okay, so basic recommendation and reputation uh, mechanism. So based on this definition, you will find in the literature so many trust models that have been developed to enable secured communication in vehicular networks. <coughs> Sorry. And they are categorized in four and uh, three uh, categories. So we have entity based trust models, data oriented trust models and hybrid. So in an entity based, every vehicle will make a decision about trust or not based on the identity of the vehicle. So he will trust anything coming from that vehicle if he trusts its uh, identity. And if uh, um, and in the data oriented trust uh, model, nodes will be will be analyzing the data coming from vehicles to decide whether to trust them or not. And when I say data, it could be anything. It could be warning message. It could be routing messages, etc. I will get back to that in um, in in more uh, in um, in. Uh, other uh, slides and in hybrid vehicular network we have both so the nodes will make observation about the identity of the vehicle and about the messages disseminated or generated by this car so <clears throat> to give you a better example of entity oriented i know that now we don't have something called, uh, to, to enable car to have an identity but imagine uh, in a normal uh, in a normal road we have cars which are already trusted, like police cars, ambulances, public transport. So those kind of vehicles are considered as trusted cars, as trusted nodes. Roadside units, part of the infrastructure, are considered as trusted entities. So any message coming from those entities is supposed to be uh, trusted, is supposed to be uh, true. So this is really why where these entity-oriented trust models are uh, based to. They said if we have certain cars which are trusted in the network, it's very easy to ensure a dissemination of trusted information. And it's very easy to ensure a trusted, uh, uh, secured environment. <clears throat> so when with uh, Farhan, my uh, my PhD student, we, 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 we tried to create a trust model for vehicular network. And then when we did the literature, we found something interesting that we, we, you, you, you will all probably find because you are doing a PhD is that all the papers, they use different simulators. So how can you compare two trust models doing this, using different simulators and using different criteria? The models are for the same purpose, for the same environment to solve the same problem, but they are evaluated in different ways. So it's very hard to compare them, which one is more efficient than the another. And one another issue as well is the is the definition of attacks. So if I'm developing a security model, to prove that it is efficient so i run it in a network with attacks to show yeah look it detects the attacks it's able to still perform regardless of the presence of the attack etc so how is the attack defined if i am <clears throat> if i am honest with myself i need to develop the attack in a way in the most complicated way as if i am a hacker but again in most of the research we found lack of information about how the attack is developed is it really a sophisticated attack or it's an attack that could be detected easily by any model? So, uh, so again, it was very hard to compare the trust model. So we decided to create a framework to compare the different trust models. And we, we, we started categorizing all the different of trust models for vehicular network we found in the literature. So put them in categories or data oriented, entity oriented and hybrid. And then we picked one trust model from each uh, category and we uh, compared them on the same framework, the same criteria and the same uh, development of um, and, and the same attacks. So we used Omnet++ for vehicle and with uh, all with Vanes and Sumo. Um, we used the de uh, default map for veins uh, with, with an area of 2.5 uh, by 2.5 uh, kilometers and we consider two scenarios we, we we put the number of honest cars so the, the good cars uh, fixed and we kept we kept increasing the number we kept increasing the number of these honest cars just to see the performance or the resistance of our trust model and in scenario number two we have a fixed number of these honest cars and we kept increasing the number of honest cars 
And in terms of man in the middle attack, uh, in terms of the attack, we developed the man in the middle attack. We tried to develop it as uh, sophisticated as we can, something seriously developed. We, we created a package for attacks in Omnet and uh, where the attacker will change the content of safety message and or the attacker will delay a safety message. So these are the two attacks that we have uh, developed. And uh, it's 20 minutes. Uh, if, if, there are, uh, if there are not many questions, can I carry on? I still have a few slides. Uh, I don't have questions at the moment. And I think maybe if you can just do two minutes max, really. Uh, OK. We've got to keep the schedule, thanks. OK, cool. So I will I will go directly to the to the results. As, oh, the uh, matrix that we have used, we used end-to-end -end delay because we are talking about safety messages. So we wanted really to make sure that the delay is short. We look at the event detection uh, probability. Are, are the cars able to detect that there was an attack? And we look at the, the trust level between cars and look at that and the false positives as well. Um, I have so many slides about results, but I will just take one of them. Uh, so at the beginning, when we did the comparison, we expected entity based trust models to outperform all of them. Um, we expected database trust model to outperform all of them because it's based on the data regardless of the entity. Uh, Etc. But actually, in the result, we found that entity based trust models are about outperform all of them. If you have a few nodes that are trusted, like roadside unit, police cars, public transport, they are able to disseminate the trusted information easily in the network. And on nodes, we'll focus only on those information and ignore all the rest of the information, even if it's modified by malicious cars or delayed by uh, malicious cars. And of course, the more the um, if you have bigger numbers of uh, trusted nodes, we have more chance to disseminate uh, the trusted information in the network. I have two more work that I, I really want to talk about in one minute. So a, a recent work I did with one another PhD student. We have developed a trusted opportunistic routing protocol for uh, connected car, for a uh, vehicular network. So we use the concept of trust within routing. So there is a there, there's a routing protocol called CORE for context aware opportunistic uh, protocol developed for opportunistic networks in uh, general. We redesigned it, readapted it with a trust a recommendation and a reputation to make it use for a uh, vehicular network. It's opportunistic. Um, it's 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 very interesting concept for vehicular network because in opportunistic routing, when a node gets a message that needs to be disseminated to a destination and it doesn't have a route to the destination, it will keep it until the road is available and an opportunity is available to this uh, destination. And the concept of trust has been used to sh to enable nodes to see if the neighboring nodes are operating within the same concept of routing. If they are, they are trusted. If they are not, they are not uh, uh, trusted. So based on direct observation. And in my latest, latest work, I have two papers accepted. They have been accepted last week on ICCVE conference, International Conference of Connected Vehicles Expo, where I focus on the human aspects. So you can have the most secure system in the world with the most secure routing. Um, very good uh, system established, uh, but if the user using it uh, doesn't have the awareness, doesn't have the the knowledge how to keep this system secure and safe, all the security design that you you, you build is going to fall. So imagine you have a server with very with strong cryptography mechanism, strong double authentication, etc. But the the admin using it keep the door open to the server room forget the door open so anyone can enter the server room just unplug the cables and cause a denial of service attack i know it's 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 it's, it's a simple thing but if in in my recent papers we have analyzed uh, the recent uh, attacks on connected cars and we found so many attacks caused by lack of knowledge and lack of awareness in uh, by the driver for example now all connected cars they have a mobile app the user use them for example to unlock the car um, to check the fuel level of the car etc so if this if the mobile phone is not secured uh, if the mobile user keep installing like uh, dodgy webs do, dodgy apps it's very easy to hack into the mobile uh, the mobile app of the car and unlock the car uh, that this has been proven. There was a Tesla attack uh, scenario which exploited exactly a vulnerability in the Tesla app 
and allow the researcher to unlock a Tesla car using a, a phishing email. And I invite you to, to look at the upstream report to see more uh, examples uh, or to look and uh, look at my papers where I analyze all those uh, vulnerabilities caused by human errors. And that's it for me. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, please uh, ask. Okay, thank you very much for that. I'm afraid you have used up the time optimally, <laughs> but but there are some really there are some really good questions in the okay. chat. So I wonder if you can perhaps be willing oh, yes. to have a look at that chat and maybe deal with these offline while we set up the next speaker. But thank okay. you very much for going through that. I mean, that was a really interesting overview, and it sounds like there's some good links to papers that people could could have a look thank at you. to learn a bit more. So I'll I'll let you have a play with the chat. Um, but thanks very much for that. Thank you.